Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is some Christian guy and today we're going to be talking about how alcohol affects personality. Um, this is to do with a very, very interesting study that I p picked up whilst doing personality research. Um, uh, I found it, uh, you can, well, I'm going to link it below anyway, uh, for in, in the description so you guys can have a look at it for yourself. But basically, it's long been known that, 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 uh, is, and depend especially if you have come from a, a background with alcoholics in it it's always been known that that alcohol affects uh personality in some way um and so it's 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 even picked up certain names as uh like courage juice for example so so let's say uh there's a people at a, at a club or a, or a pub or something like that and the guy wants to to pick up the courage to to go and ask a girl out for example sort of thing he'll have a few drinks before he goes off because he feels that it that that it gives him more confidence and and things of that sort and um we know uh that when people get on the drink or alcoholics or whatever we know that we start seeing changes in them and stuff like that and often people when you when you have a party for example and people then really go on the, on the on the drink and then if they, let's say there's someone recording the party let's say it's a wedding or something like that then afterwards when people watch these they're like oh i can't believe i did that i would have never done that and all that sort of thing so um, other than sort of anecdotal kind of kind of things, uh, uh, you know, people have then gone out to see if we could actually get hard evidence to find whether whether or not this was in fact the case. So here's a very very interesting study, um, which which basically uh, it 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 lays the issue to rest essentially. So what it says here, right? You can uh, pub pubmed.gov is wh where you guys can find it. Uh, the U.S. National Library of Medicine, National Institutes of Health. So what do they what do they have here, right? Basically, um, the heading is uh, alcohol use and personality trait uh, trait change. A pooled analysis of six cohort studies. So what this means is it's almost like a it, it pretty much like a meta analysis. So what that does is it is it go they go out and they get and they they get all of the major studies on a particular subject that's ever been done they pull those studies together and then they see what the conclusions of all these studies uh, uh sort of draws out and um and what's good about this sort of thing is that um if each study de dealt uh researched for example a group of let's say 5000 people and another one did 600 people another one did several, a few thousand people when you bring it together what you essentially have is a is a is all study is is how can you say is studies that have pulled together a much larger amount of of people in total under under all of these studies than what one study alone could probably necessarily uh, achieve on its own so the methods we'll just talk about the message methods here uh, let's go to the background first it says basically personality has been associated with alcohol use so uh, what what something that people have noticed is in personality trait theory is that some people seem to be more prone to per, to to alcoholism or alcohol abuse than other people so you get those people who who can drink like a fish and then one day they can just decide, well, I'm not going to drink anymore. They put it down. They never look at it again. Be it other people just can't do it. It ruins their life. And if they and if they manage to come off it, if they so much as as it's almost like a drug addiction. Well, it is like a drug addiction. If they so much as catch a smell of it, then they're back in there and um, and it and, and they sort of relapse. So what they've discovered is that for those of you that haven't gone that are not familiar with big five personality trait i've done videos uh sort of detailing them out and stuff i can go have a look at that so i'm not going to rehash it i'm now going to assume that you understand them and that if you guys have any questions you can just go ahead and ask um so basically what they found specifically is that the personality trait known as conscientiousness it seems to be the con the, the the personality trait that regulates that regulates impulse control so what that means is people who can can put off immediate gratification for future rewards so it's the it's the 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 the, the delay of gratification uh, uh dimension is 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 regulated under this personality trait so for example people who are very very high in conscientiousness they find it very very easy to be able to say well i will forego this now right in order for a benefit later so i won't gratify myself now by getting what i can get now and i'll put it off because i i foresee better returns if i wait a little bit longer and can be patient whereas people who are very very low in conscientiousness they pretty much take what whatever they can get and they get it they want it now and this is this is um uh basically 
uh, what you will find in people who ab either abuse drugs or any kind of substance abuse or people people who have um, uh, for example they they can't help by so for example when you're in the when you're in a shop and you're going through the sweeties aisle they always put the sweeties aisle like right there at the front because they're relying if on those people who have low impulse control to be able to buy that chocolate or buy that packet of chips at the last minute it's what they're relying on and what they find and what they found is that this personality trait of conscientiousness specifically is what what if you're very very low in it you're going to really really struggle with impulse control now there's there's a, a, a difference between uh, uh, impulsion or impulse versus compulsion right now one one of the interesting things is that uh, people who are very very who are extremely extremely high in conscientiousness will actually have a problem with compulsions rather than impulse, right? So it's not necessarily a, a, a most wonderful thing to be either one or all. And basically, the difference is is an impulse is something that comes from within. Oh, I want I want that. I want to eat that. I want to eat that chocolate. I want to have that drink. It's it's this thing that it's this inner inner thing that drives you towards doing something whereas a compulsion a compulsion is almost like having a monkey on your back beating you over the head telling you you need to go for it even though you don't necessarily want to it's it's this you know so it's the difference between being forced to do something and you don't really want to do it versus versus yeah i really really want to do that um even though I, and both may know that what they're after is is not good for them but the what but the compulsion is like i don't want to do it but i'm being forced to the impulsion is i really really want to do it but i know i shouldn't sort of thing so it it's a, it's very interesting how it actually plays out with so for example those people who are suffering from something for example anorexia those people are are, are found in the high conscientiousness part where what they're dealing with so your obsessive compulsive disorder your anorexia and things like that those are compulsions they they have to they have to do it and even inside they 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 know it's not good for them and stuff like that which is often why they try to hide it right so you an anorexics and people like that especially anorexics they are very they become like masters of hiding what they're doing there's actually you can actually find it online there's places there's websites dedicated to helping people uh, with anorexia to actually hide the signs of anorexia it's it's a it's an absolutely dreadful thing and you'll find a lot of them they talk about you know the uh, having a monkey or 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 a voice that's telling them they have to do it otherwise the world will end it's an absolutely terrible thing as well so so it's it's something that needs to be considered so the alcoholism is is a low conscientiousness this is an impulse control so they want to do it they don't necessarily think it's a bad idea um, and you find that in the world today people don't hide the fact that they're that they drink to to excess that they take drugs i mean you've even got movements in the world where they want to legalize all drugs and even though they make economic arguments they're not actually interested in the economic arguments they the most majority of one of them just want to be able to consume drugs until until they die basically without any sort of legal uh, repercussions and, and things of that sort so this is an impulse control problem with with alcohol is specific and the reason for that is that impulse is a dopaminergic system it's um it's the anticipatory reward so i'm going to get um uh, that alcohol so for example the alcohol is great when you have like a little taste and it's like yeehaw and it's like go and get some more go get some more go and get some more and the next day you're like oh my goodness i'm never going to do that again right but then the next time it's that impulse is like go get go get go get so it's a dopaminergic thing and the reason why it's equivalent to that so with alcohol it's not ne it's not necessarily everyone that gets it so for example with drugs like heroin and stuff like that it's on 100 percent of people it smashes the dopamine the dopaminergic uh, uh systems which is why it's so highly addictive so anything that is highly highly addictive is is screwing around with your dopaminergic centers that's your incentive your incentive your word reward your anticipatory reward system that that thing that says go and get which is why people who are like addicted to drugs they will they will do anything to get it they'll go and they'll rob and they'll and do all these kinds of things if they can't afford it otherwise because it's like you have you have to have this it's almost it's like uh also like if you're starving it's the same system if you're starving it's like 
even if you gnaw on someone's leg you you've got to eat something because you're starving it's go out and get go out and 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 consume all right and that's what it is is that consumatory reward type type of system that what you go and get and go and consume and go and have right and alcohol is the same thing so one of the ways you know if you are potentially have an addictive personal not addictive personality per se um so if you've got an addictive a potentially addictive personality go do your big five personality trait if you're low very low in conscientiousness then you 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 you've that's a good sign that you're going to have impulse control problems and so don't even don't even don't even go don't even go to alcohol don't do any of these kinds of things um because you you know that you're running a risk over there you have a self control you have self control uh, issues or are going to have self control difficulties it can be remedied through the through the through the development of character and discipline but it'll always be very very difficult for you and to find out whether you have the dopaminergic uh, reaction to alcohol what you can do is 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 um in a controlled environment of course but drink some alcohol like a couple get a couple of shots and you want to raise your your you want to raise your alcohol level so to the point where you actually you're getting drunk and so before you start raise, uh, sort of check your 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 heart rate and then start drinking and if you find that your heart rate starts shooting up then you know you're having a a, a that excitement consumatory reward and what happens is the reason why it gets worse and worse is because you can only get the dopamine hit so what happens is you go and you consume you right you go and you have that alcohol and you get a smash of dopamine and you're like wow that's fantastic right the problem is you will only get another smash of op- of 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 dopamine when you then go and drink more so with each level so which which is why people can't just these type of people they can't just have their drink and stay there right it's because they're constantly chasing that dopaminergic hit and you can only get the hit as you increase your blood alcohol levels and increase and increase and eat and increase it and get that get that constant dopamine smash which is why they lose all control and it's a, it's a catastrophe it's it's horrible and it's why people find it so difficult because that dopaminergic system is a very very fundamental system in human beings that that's that's the system that mo- motivates you to do anything it's the, it's it's the reason you get out of bed if you find that you lack motivation to do things it's usually because you have a problem with your dopamine with your dopamine system um so methods the present study examines associations between alcohol use and the change in the five major personality traits across two measurement occasions so they managed them they they measured them initially and then they followed up on average of 5 and 5 and a half years later 5.6 years so they they test them they give them a personality trait test to see what where they are in the big five traits and then 5 and a half years later they measure them again to see if the, to see if there's changes and they, there's uh, so it says the mean follow up so the average follow up is about 5.6 years so they're basically keeping track of these people with their alcohol consumption so what they found is a total and and this cohort study represents a total a total of 39,722 people uh, 54% of them are women so there's more women than men so it's 40 46% are men 54% are women now interestingly enough men are more likely to actually become alcoholics um and there's and there's reasons for that because one of the reasons is men on average are lower in conscientiousness than women are so that's one a very very interesting thing to so for example uh, if you go and look at um if you go and look at like homelessness a lot of a lot of homeless people are 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 on are on the alcohol have alcoholism have alcoholism problems and drug problems and you find that the vast majority of homeless people are also men and in a lot of a lot of occasions the reason why they're homeless and in poverty is because alcohol took them there Al- alcohol abuse took them there because alcohol uh, they stop being they stop being able to function in society uh, which means they stop being able to function at work and relationships paying bills things of that sort and over here it's going to come out why this is the case so 39722 people so that's that's a lot right um we're pulled from six cohort studies for an individual participant meta analysis So alcohol was me- measured between one average alcohol consumption so this is how it was measured 
uh, to so the the questionnaire that they would have been given was average alcohol consumption, frequency of binge drinking, drinking, and three su symptoms of alcohol use disorder, and four a global in indicator of risky alcohol use. So these were the measures that they were using, and then changes in the five per major personality traits known as extroversion, emotional stability. So that's neuroticism. Uh, agreeableness, conscientiousness, and openness to experience were used as outcomes. So, with those with those measures, they 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 then discuss or try to find out if it has any effect on those personality traits, right? So, what were the results? Risky alcohol use was associated with increasing extroversion. So, this is what does this mean? So, for those of you that check the videos, extroversion are people who are high in assertiveness and high in enthusiasm. So you'll find that some people get people get drunk and all of a sudden they're your best friend. Anything goes, you're right? Off they go. Um, and then and then in men, some men can get become very assertive. So if you have an increase in extroversion, it will be in one of the two factors. It'll be either enthusiasm or extroversion. So when people get have alcohol in them, their inhibitions are are uh, or let let go they increase in extroversion which so you feel like yeah let's go do something stupid they're like yeah let's go do something stupid that's great so that's the increase in enthusiasm and then those who so, sort of want to want to start a fight for example um or let's say let's say you have um let's say you have a problem in the family right and you've never uh, and you've always sort of put things under the rug right Put, swept things under the rug so there's uh, family issues that have never been resolved and um, the person is on alcohol what happens is their assertiveness increases so all of those <laughs> all of those things that have been swept under the rug suddenly come out and the person's willing to you uh, and they go and they, they have a fight because now everything is getting aired out and and uh, it can be a bit of a catastrophe because you're obviously your judgment is impaired and you you aren't you can't reason rationally and so abstract reasoning gets shot to hell when you're on alcohol so you, that is that's the wrong time for you to be dealing with your issues and but that's you know when the people are on the drink their extroversion goes up and that's the time they choose right so there's a there's a confidence level of 95 percent so they, they, this is this is pretty pretty strong study right so they have an increase in extroversion so those are the consequences of of, of extroversion uh it's it's why people a lot of people and here's the interesting thing why alcohol is such a such a social it's it's so common in social situations and a lot of people find that they're unable to be social if they don't have alcohol in them and the reason for that is these are people who are probably relatively low in, in extroversion to some degree and they find it difficult to be social so what what happens is the alcohol comes in increases their extroversion which then gives them the the the, the personality resources to be to go out and be more social and what happens is we we start using this as teenagers for example i mean people kids whether you like to believe it or not kids are, are start drinking when they're like 10 years old parents don't know about it but social sort of recreational use starts very very young and as a result because they are relying on their alcohol to be social they never develop their social skills because they they rely on the alcohol and so as adults the habit continues because they've never developed the, the 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 characterological skills or the social skills necessary because they've always relied on the alcohol so there's very very interesting implication over there uh, by the way so for those of you who think that religion because christianity you know i'm a christian this is a christian channel this is why we say don't you know this is why god says stay away from drink and you read the book of proverbs you know uh, uh what's it wine 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 is a mocker and beer is a beer is a fool or something something like that right i forget, I forget the quote so 
stay away from these things you know so we i mean we're obviously the guys in the biblical days didn't have this evidence obviously you could see any anyone with common sense can see that when people drink they become stupid and think and bad things happen i mean read the newspaper right so and so went and raped so and so or so and so went and ran someone else over right and when you read the newspaper where did they start they started out in the pub they were all drunk and they went and did something stupid every single time i mean just read it's just uh, there's a guy there's a guy at work that buys the local paper it's called the sun and you read through that paper and you're just like every single time oh some completely idiotic thing happened where people got injured and every time well they were drinking right every time it starts it starts in the drink so there's that extra version for you right now what do they find so there's an increase in extroversion now they find that there's a decrease in emotional stability so what happens is because they use the term emotional stability so neuroticism is emotional instability so for example for those of you that are familiar with my video i deal with neuroticism so high neuroticism is 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 emotional instability so lack of stability so you're very volatile you're very withdrawn and low neuroticism is emotional stability so what happens is they found that there was a decrease in emotional ability which means an increase in neuroticism so what happens right if you have an increase in neuro in trait neuroticism you have the, again the two sub subcategories what does this mean it means higher volatility higher withdrawal so you find that alcohol can can affect people in two different ways some people withdraw and become very quiet uh sort of thing and um they sort of just sort of sit in the corner and you know sort of chill out and whatever and um and and sort of can become very defensive if you try to approach them or whatever the case might be they become they come, become a little bit weird and then volatility volatility is the dimension where people generally want to fight so for example any anyone that's ever been in situation social situation will have experienced this right so you get some guy who's totally he's he's gone right he's totally he's legless right and he's decided because now increase in extroversion he's decided that you are his best friend <laughs> he's decided you're his best friend and all personal boundaries are gone right so he's coming he doesn't know you're from a bar of soap but you're his best friend now and if you tell him to get lost right because now he's higher in trait neuroticism he takes it personally right he immediately sees this as an offense right he's now takes it as a personal affront and this is typical for people who are high in neuroticism people who are high in neuroticism take everything personally they're just there's there's such a pain in that in that way everything is personal right uh you can't do anything and everything is like oh you know so are you making me out to be the worst person possible and so be so that's that's what happens right they become very very defensive and then they want to and if if the volatility grow, goes up then they want to they want to fight with you or start a fight with you because how dare you not want to be my friend and are you do you think you do you think you're better than i am you know you think you're better than me that typical stupid idiot stuff right so that's that's how what happens when when neuroticism goes up now here's another thing neuroticism the higher your level of neuroticism the greater at risk you are for depression so um if you suffer from any depression or depressive tendencies at all stay away from alcohol it's 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 you you're just asking for trouble man you you're insane if you if if you even touch the stuff um bad for you now here's the problem right you have a decrease in emotional stability so your emotional emotional stability overall so these they 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 measure this over five year period so this is whether whether you eventually get better once you come off it but it seems like the it's pretty permanent right although it not necessarily the case so this is why people can't hold jobs right because at work they be, they're going to become problematic people if they're high in neuroticism first of all high in neuroticism means that you can't cope with stress so much you're a lot more easily stressed out um you might start becoming very argue, argumentative and peevish with your with your coworkers um your 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 uh, managers and stuff won't be able to discipline you so for example a manager someone who's high in neuroticism if a, if a manager comes to him and says listen you did x and y and z wrong 
rather than be like, oh, all right, okay, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll fix it up and whatever, what they will do is instead they'll blow up at their managers and, be, and, and, and make out like they're being persecuted. Oh, you know, you pick on me and how dare you say that and you're trying to tell me I'm not good enough and they, they, they take it personal rather than a critique. It was like, that's what the manager is there to do, right? Is to, is to get you, uh, uh, you know, doing the right stuff. So it's an awful thing and you find that people who are then on the on the drink can't hold down jobs because they actually become very very painful people to be around and also with the increase in extroversion uh they they become chatty and and um so extroversion is a very very good thing if you're a social person but if you're working in like an office or whatever extroversion is good because you want to get along with people but at the same time it's you 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 work is not a social situation you're there you're there to work and and crack on with things so um, it can be a little bit of an of a, of, a, of a problem, and now what happens is in a in a um, in a in a work environment, if you're high in volatility and then higher in extroversion, so assertiveness, not only are you less likely to take cr constructive criticism from your superiors, right? But the fact of the matter is because now you're higher in assertiveness, and now higher in volatility, you're more likely to start an argument right and and really get in your boss's face which is then more likely to get you fired which which is obviously a problem and because your 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 higher reasoning abilities are, are diminished uh, you know you you're going to come off second best so again one of the reason why people who have problems or drink too much or have alcohol problems they they struggle to hold down jobs and things like that so we have a um uh, you also have a decrease in agreeableness. So again, agreeableness. So agreeableness is the is the dimension of cooperation. So people who are high in agreeable, in agreeableness, they're more compassionate, they're more cooperative, they're more polite, uh, they're they're nicer to get along with. So agreeable. So even though extroversion goes up, agreeableness goes down. So the person becomes more argumentative, becomes more selfish. Um, uh, will not cooperate with with team with teammates uh, as as much um, they're not they won't be as polite they won't be as considerate and things like that so again uh, not a good thing for social situations not a good thing for for any kind of work environment at all if you lower if you lower your agreeableness and here's the thing again why, why it's worse for men is like generally speaking women are a lot higher in agreeableness so even if they even if their agreeableness drops it's still not as bad for women to have the drop as it is for men to have the drop because men on average are disagreeable to begin with so when they're on the drink they just become they just become impossible it's it's just it becomes ridiculous whereas in general women can get away with it a little bit more because they start higher up in agreeableness trait on in general although for women in general so so in agreeableness women fare better because they 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 can afford to lose more but the problem is you have a decrease in emotional stability now what happens is women on this is where then the woman will suffer more because on average women are higher in neuroticism and alcohol and alcoholism will basically increase your neuroticism and so that's where men fare a little bit better because men on average are lower in neuroticism so if they become a little bit higher it's not as much of a problem as it is for women so you're going to have confidence issues uh, and it becomes it becomes a real real problem in the workplace um and it's why it's why a lot of times you 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 see in the workplace a lot of women complain that that they're the that they're victimized and taken advantage of and the and and things of that sort and and um it's it can be a bit of a problem and you see the, you see these things pl play out in the world you know and and in general people just abuse alcohol just way too much on in general so these are these are the kind of problems you will have and how it will and it will sli manifest slightly different depending on whether you're dealing with men or or, or with women because of where on average they sort of land up in the personality traits to begin with so um so that's a good agreeableness and conscientiousness now you also have a decrease in conscientiousness now conscientiousness again so what happens is people who are prone to alcoholism will be low in conscientiousness in the first place right so because that's your impulse control so what happens is alcohol will decrease that further which makes it even more impossible or even more difficult for you to 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 control your impulses now on average if you have a lowering of 
of conscientiousness this is a very very significant problem because the best the strongest predictor for your for success in the business world and in the academic world is conscientiousness so the higher you are in conscientiousness the better you do in in the workplace the better you do and the better you do in academia now what happens is conscientiousness breaks down into industriousness and orderliness so for example this is why you see that people who are low in this trait are very disorganized and they don't work right so you if you're low in ind industriousness is how hard you are going to work how much you are willing to work and orderliness is what it says how organized are you are are you tidy are you meticulous and all of these kinds of things so if you have a drop in these things especially and these are the kinds of things that you need if you want to be successful in the workplace you have to be willing to work hard you've got to be organized and all these kinds of things so if on average people are because of alcohol people are experiencing a drop in this trait it means they become significantly less uh, uh, less quality in terms of their of being an employer so working hard being organized uh, having impulse control so if a fight so again this impulse control uh, is made worse by the increase in, in in neuroticism so if the person has got low impulse control or reduced impulse control but increased volatility means the the likelihood of them are getting into an and and decreasing agreeability means that the likeliness of getting into an argument or a dispute of kind of some kind or whatever the case might breaking the rules um it becomes it just really really aggravates the problem it's it's you know and then with the increase in assertiveness so not so so a decrease in all of these traits plus an increase in in, in extroversion means that you're going to behave like an absolute moron but you're going to think you're justified and you're going to be confident you're going to act like a moron and be confident about it uh, which is which is completely which is terrible and anyone that's been around alcoholics will know that this is exactly what they're like um so a decrease in conscientiousness um so that's 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 ter that's a terrible thing so so you have a decrease in, uh, in in stability so an increase in neuroticism a decrease in agreeableness a decrease in conscientiousness and an increase in extroversion so none of these things do you really really want to have happen to you at all especially if you're already high or low in these things it just makes it makes things worse um now when it comes to openness openness is the one thing that they didn't find uh was was so i'm going to read here except the association between alcohol and use and extroversion these associations were consistent across a cohort of studies and across different measures of alcohol use so here they actually don't include uh openness openness um, was not something that they were able to to actually see just my stupid mouse went the battery went flat so yeah that's my own prepar preparational faux pas low in lo i'm very low in orderliness <laughs> so yeah there we go proof <laughs> so yeah they actually don't uh, they actually don't mention um openness in this but um if i can use as far as i can tell they don't measure openness so the conclusion these findings suggest that alcohol use is associated with person with is associated with personality trait changes in adulthood so those are the consequences that you can you can have um why alcohol becomes a crutch and why why alcohol uh if you look with the in with the increase in neuroticism the decrease in agreeableness the decrease in, in conscientiousness alcohol is the is the social is the social disintegrator completely it's 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 alcohol is an is a plague on human society and you find that um alcohol or substance substance abuse in general but alcohol specifically because because it's a le it's a legal drug basically um you find that that it is it is it is a problem it's from your sort of middle to lower economic um uh sort of bands you find you find it's a real 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 problem um it's 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 terrible and the and the problem with this right is the one of the reasons is because people who find themselves in the lower economic bands tend to be people who are lower in conscientiousness because 
like like I said earlier on, uh, high conscientiousness. So conscientiousness is a very very po powerful predictor of both academic success and and business and workplace success. Even if you come from a disadvantaged background, which is what you actually find this to be the case. A lot of people who come from disadvantaged backgrounds and they end up being very very successful if you do a personality trait on them or pretty much every single one of them are high in high in conscientiousness and that's this and that's the dimension that really really helps you succeed in life and so what happens is people who find themselves generally in in sort of the middle lower to the lower economic uh, socioeconomic bands there's a lot of um, there's a lot of alcohol and drug problems in those in those bands because you will find that that uh, uh, lower lower conscientiousness generally puts you in those bands and lower conscientiousness is associated with with impulse uh, a lack of impulse control which then means more substance abuse and all of these kinds of things so it's a real real problem um re really really a, an, an, an absolutely huge problem obviously there's other stuff that can be considered but um if if you if you come from a disadvantaged background whatever the case might be um the last thing you should do is is ever touch alcohol because it's just gonna is gonna take away whatever chances that that you that you already already might have. Don't do it, man. Just 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 don't do it. Um, it's 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 not worth it. And um, whatever whatever good feelings. So for example, over here, a lot of people when they drink because they get a good feeling out of it. And this goes back to what I said before, where where whilst you are drinking, you feel good because you're getting that dopamine hit. But as soon as you stop drinking, you then feel absolutely terrible. And this is because, like we saw just now, alcohol is is associated with a decrease in emotional stability or conversely to another way of putting it an increase in neuroticism which means you are more prone to depression it actually leaves you open to being depressed and on average feeling a lot worse about things than than you normally would so for example someone who is high in neuroticism will produce so let's say you have you let's say you have a stimulus let's say you have a st situation that gives you a stimulus a, st a, a negative a negative stimulus so a person who is low in, neur in neuroticism will have let's say uh one one how can you how can you say so so a person who is low in neuroticism will will let's say have one unit of bad feeling for every negative stimulus whereas a person who's high in neuroticism will have like five units of negative emotion for every negative stimulus so it's one of those it's one of those terrible things where with with high neuroticism if something bad happens you're going to feel a lot worse about it than the same so you take two people and expose them to something negative if you are high in neuroticism, you're going to feel a lot worse about something bad than the person who's low in neuroticism, which is one of those things. It's like, so which response is the correct response? Well, we don't really know. We usually rely on our personality traits to look at a situation and that we filter through our personality trait how badly we feel about something, which is why you often find... When you're talking to someone, you're saying, man, you know, you really overreacted over there. You shouldn't feel so bad about it. That's usually an indicator that the person is very high neuroticism, which is why they're reacting in a much worse way than the situation actually really, really warrants um, for them to feel. So it's it's really it's really an absolutely terrible thing. And you find this, you, f you actually find this with people who suffer things like depression where they will discount the positives, right? So someone who's very, who really, really, really suffers from depression and they will like have self-worth issues, for example, and you'll say to them, I love you. And they will say something like, oh, you only love me because you have to. So they, they discount the positives and things like that. And so you will find that with alcohol, it becomes that way. So a person who let's say is at workplace is passed up for promotion they will be they will be like oh you know they feel victimized oh it's because you know me and you are you are you are uh, that's a personal affront and whatever and they will never think well maybe i i didn't work hard enough or the case might be um or if they're given a criticism they will just be you know it, it's it's absolutely awful or conversely they will completely lack any confidence so for example uh, someone who is 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 high neuroticism may also feel like if you give them an opportunity they won't take it because they will discount the positive so they will be like i'm, I'm not really worth it i i don't really have uh, uh 
the skills so they will underplay themselves and undersell them, uh, themselves so earlier on i said women are generally higher in in trait neuroticism so that's one of the reasons why in the workplace you find that women struggle to negotiate because because of the high neuroticism trait they will be less inclined to negotiate on their own behalves because they're not as confident as what uh, men necessarily are and if you add alcohol into that mix it makes it even worse um, so you know if you want to do well in general in the in in the world stay away from alcohol do what the bible says and just stay away from it it's just you're not doing yourselves any favor whatsoever and um yeah it's 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 silly it's silly stay away from it man you you don't need it there's no there's no there's no reason and you you always get these uh these articles oh alcohol a day can relieve blood pressure and it's it's absolute it's just garbage it's people trying to excuse it's people trying to excuse something that they know is completely stupid and idiotic to do it's like stay away from it um it's it's nothing but it can cause you nothing but problems you know um and some people might argue, oh, well, it increases your extroversion and your assertiveness. Yeah, well, you can increase your extroversion and your assertiveness with assertiveness training. You don't need alcohol because alcohol just becomes a, a crutch. You aren't developing anything to do it. And then, and then, com and then conversely, it, it completely wrecks all of your other traits, which, which might be good. And you, you, you know, so not worth it guys stay away from alcohol um that's a psychological thing i mean i haven't even touched on the on the problems with health it completely wrecks your health completely wrecks your brain it's not good for you but psychologically because people hardly ever speak about it everyone's oh you know it damages your kidneys and whatever but your personality man this is this is not good for you at all um not something you want to do not something you want to entertain anyway ladies and gentlemen thank you very much and uh, i hope this helps you out share subscribe facebook youtube one way i'm on all of those just look for some christian guy and uh, and you and you'll find me thank you very much uh, be well and off it is in goodbye god bless